don't engage alone. We do this together. <laughs> Somebody clip this one. So we've covered bad movies in the past. I hell I had to review Blank Man, but this takes the cake as one of the worst movies I have ever seen. Hey, what's up, Nix? What the heck was DC? Thinking, but anyway, let me okay, introduce here, my I fine have to ask panel. What? Well, okay, go ahead. Worse, sorry. Which movie is worse, Blank Man or this? Oh man, that's so hard. I knew you were going to ask me that. Maybe you should prepare a better answer. Which one's better? Uh, which one's uh, which one's a better film? By uh, Sage, hey, what's up, Sage Torres? And uh, Catwoman is not the worst DC movie. It's Birds of Prey changed my mind. Okay, he's got a point there. But there, um, there, is, there is your, there is your uh, April Fool's Day movie for next year. Oh God, no! But yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we did it. We got it. We got him. We're gonna all break right. you. Well, We're enjoy you. watching all the Captain Marvel movies that keep coming out, Nick. So I mean, that's already been decided. So for this, it's like uh, I, I probably, I'd rather watch this. Let me be honest. I'd rather watch this than Blankman because at least this had a plot. Nice, Nick. So today we are ta- we are talking to Taladia Plays. What's up, brother? Ah, what can I say? It's been a busy week. And yes, I had to watch the ending of Catwoman again. Ha! Uh, Maybe you should have finished your homework assignment. Hey, I did complete most of it, though. Most of it does not equal finishing it. A day late and a dollar short, brother. But but mind you, mind you, I did do my my homework compared to Jay Heat when he didn't do his homework last year. That is facts. Okay, you know what you have you have an up on Jay Heat there. Uh, it's, 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 so uh, we also have the my oldest friend, and I mean oldest friend in both in terms of age, uh, yeah, uh, the Phoenix Press. What's up, brother? Uh, just uh, just enjoying this cat fight. And we've got Nix. What's up, Nix? Not much. I used to watch this film like actually enjoying it. I had the GameCube oh, what, what game. The heck? What? It was a GameCube game. Oh. Uh, uh, Catwoman had some great stories in the comics. I can't understand why I didn't use that material when making this movie. Because Okay, okay, okay. I, I need to shed some light on that. Yeah, um, go ahead. So, uh, this, so, basically, Batman Returns in 1992. All right? And... Uh, so that, that movie came out. Originally, Catwoman died in that movie, all right? And so that ending where Catwoman's alive, that cost them $250,000 just for that one shot. So so they wanted to make a, a, a spit-off movie, a Catwoman movie. But that entered development hell for, like, the next 10 years. So finally, in the early 2000s, they kind of rebooted it as kind of a standalone movie. And that's how this travesty came to be. Okay, you know what? Uh, wait, any Arrowverse show past season two is worse than Catwoman. Okay, lad, you make a good point on that one too. You Which, do make uh, a fun, good point. Fun fact: like, I feel like they kind of took the like, like Batman. You can obviously tell they used Batman uh, Returns as a starting point because if you look at the like the origins of Selina from Batman Returns, and you, you kind of compare that to uh, Patience Phillips. Uh, yeah. they they actually do match up rather well with the cats like roaming over her and whatnot. So there is some connective tissue. I was waiting for Catwoman to go. You know what happens to a cat when it's struck by lightning? Same thing as everything else. God damn it, you baited me. You baited uh-huh, me. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So uh, Halle Berry looked good in the Catwoman suit. Yeah, but 
Is, your, is that your guilty pleasure, Brown Destroyer? Just saying. yeah, I, th I think I think it is. I refuse to watch this again. I remember really disliking it. To think we almost got a Catwoman spinoff movie starring Michelle Pfeiffer in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Just yeah, ago. that would have been so much better. But well, crazy is... fact, mm -hmm. uh, there was actually supposed to be an animated um, continuation of the Catwoman movie where wow. Selena Kyle would meet her. But it was put basically in the garbage when the movie didn't do very well at all. So, <laughs> so another interesting thing is when the mentor person like throws all the photos of like all the other cat women. Michelle Pfeiffer's photo as Catwoman is actually in that in that in that in that stack. So this 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 movie is technically in yeah. the Burton universe. It's all connected to, to answer your question, lad. Yeah. Oh God, that that ah, what is it with Burton after? Oh, what is it with the Burton verse where after movie two everything went burr, downhill, like uh, severe? You know what's it's so bad. I think in the new fifty two they kind of put it where her origins were mystical cats. But uh, uh, so the idea of this is that Patience Phillips, not Selena Kyle. Is like uh she's like a fashion campaign designer. She hears uh, she hears like a, her corrupted like CEO board talking about ignoring t test results. For, oh, for like a what to... next? Couple of fun facts. Uh, her best friend is Alex Borstein, who you might know better as the voice of Lois from Family Guy. And her boss, uh, one of them is Sharon Stone. The other dude is literally the Merovingian from The Matrix. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, no Batman, no no Gotham. The character was even named Selena Kyle. What were these people smoking? <laughs> yeah, but we don't know. We, we we don't know, and quite frankly, I don't think I want to know because then that uh, means I, I want to understand what's going on with this because I'm not interested. But think, so the, it's the, like, the well, movie is it's oddly well casted. Like the cast is like for the time is actually really really solid. Like it actually got some really good act. Like. For the, like, you gotta realize, early two thousands, Brad, Brad uh, Halle Berry was at the height of her career at this time. Benjamin Bratt was still a, a really big draw. Sharon Stone uh, is is kind of basically at that. She was at the point of her career where Angelina Jolie is now. Like a lot of the people in this were very well known names at the time. Actually, okay, so hang on. This should have reworked as a vixen movie. Yeah, that would have worked a lot better with, with what they have her doing. What's up, Taladia? Yes. This movie. Burned my eyes. <laughs> Literally <laughs> and figuratively. No, you know what's kind of funny? Here's what Talani was like. He was like two faced in Batman after they throw the acid on his face. He was like, My eyes. My eyes. Yeah. It's it just like, No, no, never again am I watching Catwoman as a joke. No, <laughs> that's never happening yeah. again. The CG anime fan says, I finally saw Catwoman a couple of years ago and I didn't hate it. I thought it was pr pretty funny. It's one of those things where it, it, here's the thing about watching the movie from my perspective. Because again, by this is the last time we're gonna have a month of bad movies because this was brutal. Um, see, I'm watching this and I'm trying to find something to like because with me, when I watch these movies, I like to find one thing to like. And I'm literally whenever they would set whenever, whenever they would have something I like, immediately something would happen afterwards that would undermine it like okay they mm. kill patients for F F phillips to cover up uh what the company's doing that's cool then she's brought back to life by cat breath <sighs> like well well i mean, I mean have, you ever, have you ever actually had a cat breathe on you it's actually no very because rank. i don't want to it's a <laughs> bad breath. it's actually very rank so mm. like the fact that like the, the, the like the cat's breath was so bad it literally raised the dead. That is the most believable part of this movie. But not only that, you had a cat army. Uh, this is like Ant Man uh, fighting Kang with an army of super smart ants. Uh, I, I actually saw Stealing Catwoman on the same day. That was an interesting double feature. Oh, Why? God. Why? Why would you do that? That is that is literally that is wait, literally wait, wait, outlawed wait, wait, wait. by the Geneva Convention. This is. Oh. Oh. oh! Okay, oh. comic thing moment. Comic Wait, hang thing on, moment. hang on. He's back. Oh. 
All right, question. Is she wrong? No. Also, the fact that all three of us said that in unison, that is a comic league moment. Yeah, that, that is right there. Uh, it, honestly, Britt has a very good point because Wait. at least this is not having Wonder Woman have sex with a, 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 a what is hinted in the movie to be a gay man. Wait, wait, wait. Britt, I gotta ask you a question. Why is this your guilty pleasure? Yeah, for those of you that don't know, the, uh, Britt has confided in me that, that it, it, this is one of the movies she actually enjoys. So I'm like, ah. And you, you, know, trust funny? Taste, you know what's funny? And why Britt, do you I'll, trust her taste in movies? Britt, I, 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 I'm going to call you out on this. When I was watching the movie, the movie ends and I go, how does Britt like this? She's normally on point for stuff. Yeah, but, exactly. Ah, it's like, to how be can fair, this be guilty pleasure? But to be fair, I have been brought back to life by cats swarming on me basically every morning. Oh, that's concerning, uh, Dave. That's con- very, very concerning. Brown assures Superman and the Mole Man had outdated visuals, but the actual film is not bad. George Reeves is one of the best Superman actors. Yeah, true. But um, Catwoman Haunted is the Catwoman movie. Yeah. But so wa- again, I'm watching this and I'm like, they make so many decisions that are the stupidest. So apparently, so she eats like cans and cans of tuna. She literally becomes a cat, literally becomes a cat. She, she enters her apartment and she like, she lands and then like goes up like this, like a cat and then punches a window. And I'm like, this, this is what, wow. Not even Michelle Pfeiffer didn't even do this, but here's the thing. Michelle Pfeiffer had pretty much the same origin, but she didn't turn into an actual cat. I got some yeah. catnip got... scene later on. Oh, oh, got... oh my god, yeah. Go ahead, I, got I got something to say. When she at the tuna, it disturbed me so much. And then when she's on top of the on top of the thing, the shelf or whatever, sleeping on the shelf and falling off, I'm like, how how mm. are you being acting like a cat when you're not a cat? And the breathing thing, I'm just like the, the cat probably probably smells of bad breath. Like you probably got bad breath now. Yeah. By the way, uh, I should make for, for for like an intro. Uh, her going. That'd be great. I mean, the cat got the tongue is is clip worthy on its own. Like, there's so many. Yeah. Problems. As soon as she, as soon as she said that, I was like, well, that's gonna be the title of the stream. Also, but... I I love like the basketball scene. Where, where mm-hmm. like they just had like the clip of of Brad Burt staring at her butt like like come on dude how about the the basketball scene that later turns into a tango scene for no reason and I'm watching this and I'm like well first off here here's the other thing this guy took half took like three quarters of the movie to figure out she was Catwoman when she literally does all these impossibly athletic stunts the scene at like the fair when she's helping the kid get down off the the Ferris wheel is breaking down. I'm like, dude, you see what your girlfriend's doing? She's Nick, not human. She's Nick, human. No, we know it's kind of funny. They gave her the lowest lame treatment. I, except yeah, that was the this worst dude. Wait, wait, wait. This dude is the is the man version of Lois Lane because she made it very obvious she was Catwoman. That like, was the like, best like, okay, my, my favorite. This is my my favorite logic fail is. She she did like the donuts and said she was sorry. And then she had a coffee cup and was, and was like, oh, it's the same person. It's just literally the same signature, but oh, look at the curvature of the S. We're talking about two different people here. Like the most BS of BS reasons. Yeah, so that's stupid. the other thing. So if, if he starts to figure it out by comparing her handwriting. And then it's like the handwriting indicates she had a rough childhood with her father. I'm like, how? Do you, do, you see what, do you see what Brit says? Yeah, Britt says it's one of those uh, cult trash movies you know is so ridiculous and able to laugh at more than take it seriously. Okay, you have a point there, but still, it's like, ah. Uh, I th- 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 this movie is cringe the movie. That, it's cat mm. cringe the movie. That's what it is. I still can't believe this is your guilty pleasure, Britt. You need to explain uh. that to us. But anyway, so... Uh... The only reason he even figured it out was because she literally left one of the nails from her costume on her oh floor. Oh my god. And he was over during like they were like spending the night together. I'm like, how do you leave that on your floor? So he has cat sex is, is what happens. Uh, way, that, that's literally what I yelled at when that scene happened in the movie. 
I'm like, ah. But so, Nick, you were hyping up that you had some more trivia. So please regale us so we can get through this. Well, um, I was I was sharing a bunch of it. Like I said, uh, the the cast is pretty well stacked. Uh, the the mentor person, uh, she was on uh, um, Six Feet Under the HBO show. She's on a like she's on American Horror Story. Uh, like I said, um, we got we got we got Lois. Lois is, is in here, but uh, hmm. but yeah. Also, the, this uh, if if you notice this this uh, film does like the, that kind of trope that a lot of early two thousand shows do movies do where it's like oh uh i need to know something i'm gonna have a scene of me googling it like they had it oh yeah like, really intense google moments yeah like that's a very early 2000s movie trope that i don't see a lot of people talk about um but yeah like it was it, this was this is technically in the burton verse so imagine uh, like imagine a kingdom like uh a, a, a crisis at infinite earth and they actually get Halle Berry. imagine if she showed up in flashpoint no you know it'd be great Imagine mm -hmm. if in the Flash movie, when he, when he's getting the Chrono Ball, one of the portals opens and it's a CGI Halle Berry Catwoman. Just why are you remind, reminding me of that? <laughs> because it's fun. If you didn't react this way, I wouldn't do it. So it's it's part of the fun. I actually found a uh, Catwoman uh, movie to be very boring. Well, that that's that that's the least of its problems. CGI fan says so, so the Catwoman. A Catwoman and Joker both have in common is that they're Batman-related films that have Francis Conroy as a supporting character. It's true. At least in Joker, technically Batman shows up. Technically. Bruce, but Very still. Very technically, but yeah. Yeah. WB, you're tearing me apart. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I have to play this. Yeah, it's like at Warner Brothers. Oh my god. And I'm like, this is one of the reasons why I've always said DC because here's the thing, a Catwoman movie could have been very cool because it's basically a heist movie. It's basically like like the uh it's essentially it like the Oceans movie. But you do it this is literally someone that has no exposure to the character going, okay, so it's a woman that has cat powers, right? What? It 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 is the this is the example of why I say Warner Brothers does not deserve the DC brand because historically it's it, before Zack Snyder even began directing stuff and this is my obligatory reference to Zack Snyder is before Snyder ever directed Man of Steel in other words before we had peak DC content um they were making movies like this yeah, uh, geez. Uh, but I love where when Halle Berry was accepting the Razzie for this movie, she goes, "Thank you for putting me in this crappy movie." Oh, that's the other thing. That's 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 actually the the other thing. Uh, she accepted her Razzie in person, which which is like something you don't really see that often. And then oh, apparently boy. she burned it afterwards. Well, yeah. Why would you want to have? I have a Razzie, but so. Let's go around and then we'll we'll talk about our general thoughts in the movie. I'll start with with Nick's your general thoughts on Catwoman because you are the real life Catwoman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not great. I think the part that I liked about the most because I had uh, the DVD version mm -hmm. and there was uh, some extra bonus features like deleted scenes, which were okay, not great. But the real gem for me was, and I've talked about this a little before, but they had a segment, a little bonus feature called The Many Faces of Catwoman, where they had a bunch of Ooh, I think I Catwoman experts on their little panel. They had Adam West, Michelle Pfeiffer, mm -hmm. they had Lee Merriweather, Julie Newmar, Eartha Kitt, and a bunch of DC creatives who worked on Catwoman comic books. And they were was all Bruce Tim involved? I don't remember him being involved. I think involved, he might have no. been. I think he might have been. Ah. But it's actually very fascinating to see and get the take that they have on all their different versions of Catwoman and what they basically went through and what the character means to them. It's, it's yeah. interesting. Because here's the thing. Catwoman is a great character for DC. In fact, my second favorite pairing is Batcat. But it, she's she's a character that doesn't get it. 
that either doesn't get enough attention or the attention she gets is egregious, i.e. Exactly. Gotham War. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it should be an easy character for DC to get. Arguably, the, the closest we got to good Catwoman content was Dark Knight Rises and The Batman. And uh, as for the video game, yep, not Arkham. great. No, I mean like the Catwoman video game. Not there great. There was a Catwoman video game? Yes, Thank you was. by uh, yeah. PA Games. Uh, not great. I'm going to say it right now, but it, it's part of my childhood, so I give it kind of a leeway. But it, I remember it being absolutely awful, and it took me so long to finish to actually beat the game. I There was a time where I couldn't even get past the second level, all right? And wow. I like to think that's not just because I'm a stup- I was a stupid kid, but I, because the game design was horrible. So, fun fact. Here's the effect that this movie had. So, you already had Supergirl come out, which bombed. So, this movie sealed the coffin on female-led superhero movies uh, until Wonder Woman. I, I say that's more on Elektra. Than, than, like, this movie certainly didn't help, but you gotta realize Elektra was still made after this movie. Like, Elektra came out in 2005, 2006. This was, like, 2002, 2003. So it was. It was. I, 2004, I say, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but this electric still came effort. out. After, yeah, Electra still came out after this movie, though. Mm-hmm. So I, I think Electra is is more. I, I they probably both of them in tandem, but Electra was kind of the nail in the coffin. True, but still, imagine that. So you're like, let's have a feel. Imagine uh, again when they were making Wonder Woman. They're like, okay, so. We have to make this really good because uh, the past wasn't really that good. The Supergirls film is really underrated. Maybe we'll discuss it someday. Britt Ev- Brit says, honestly, I put this in the same category as Batman and Robin, Ridiculous Camp. That's an yeah. interesting way of putting it. I, I mean, I get, yeah, that's not the only way you can watch this movie in a tolerable like, manner. Like, it's, 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 it, I think the film cut, like, like the film is many things it's not boring at the very least it's not boring and you can kind of enjoy it in a in a ironic so bad it's good kind of way like it, it, it's, it's basically the room of superhero movies <laughs> nice nice the uh daniel says what i don't really understand is why make a Catwoman movie when there's not a live action one Woman movie here's why daniel because batman stuff sells so they were heavily investing in some type of Batman content. Because also, remember, this is after Michelle Pfeiffer and everyone loved that. So they were like, let's give Catwoman her own movie. And then it later devolved into this am- amalgamation of crap. Yeah, the other thing is, um, Wonder Woman really wasn't that popular of a character until I'd say, like, she didn't hit mainstream until, until Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot yeah. made Wonder Woman made. Thank you, Zack Snyder. Like I'd argue, uh, uh, Harley Quinn was probably the first mainstream female, like comic book character, like main mainstream. Yeah, because it wasn't until like yeah, I, I, I do agree on that because uh, particularly as a scholar of Wonder Woman, yeah, because uh, obviously she had some good comics, but again, mainstream non comic book people. I mean, obviously they knew who Wonder Woman was. It's like mm-hmm. the same thing. It's the same argument I have when I say Superman was not re- relevant until Man of Steel. The character still exists and people still know who the character is. It's just no one respected the character until like Man of Steel in the new 52. And then uh, with Wonder Woman, with Wonder Woman, it was less of an egregious thing because still you had Linda Carter. But still, it yeah. was like until Gal Gadot came, uh, was uh, until the like bvs and wonder woman came out wonder woman really wasn't like it wasn't like oh my gosh it's wonder woman and arguably she took a little bit of a reputational hit with 1984 which is why i would like wonder woman 3 to come out to kind of redeem that version of the character but that's just me because i think she deserves to to have a little bit of a redemption in there particularly if superman was because the rumor is patty jenkins was going to have superman show up in a wonder woman movie and we know i want that But you know, here's my here's my take on the whole Catwoman movie thing because I yeah, go ahead. Know, 
I thought it was a bad film. From mm-hmm. start, right? And I really did not like the idea of like I, I like the idea of it being ancient Egyptian. That that's the only thing I liked about it. The other than other than that, everything else was just like, uh, no. Because did they ever explain why the cats have powers to bring people back to life and make them cat avatars? They kind of did in that uh, midnight. Story. Yeah. Uh, was. One at a time, oh. guys. Go ahead, Nix. Uh, uh, so, basically, uh, they kind of vaguely explain it. Midnight, the cat she rescues, and the cat that kind of starts everything off, is an Egyptian Mao cat. And the professor lady that she goes to, that owns the cat, uh, explains that they were supposedly messengers of the goddess Bath, and it was Sort of like the cat god Bast was giving her these powers. They didn't explain it very well, but that's no. They obviously didn't. I remember it. I was like six to eight years old when this movie came out, and I watched it, and I I still remember basically everything about it. it yeah. I was I was a teenager when this came out. I was only 13, 13 14 when this movie uh, came out. I think. Probably roughly the same age to age as Taladia. Except I had two zeros after the name. But any, anyway, CG comic fan says Superman was well liked because of Christopher Reeve. Yeah, that's true. The movie helped make make Superman an iconic character. But what I mean is that the character was not really respected as much before Man of Steel. That's what I'm going to add in there. Because again, the character being iconic and being respected are two very different things. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can bet that Zack Snyder can, can make successful Supergirl and Batwoman movies. Yes, I, of I would course. love to see that. It, it could have been more successful if they used the comics. Her '90s look alone would have been bang. Well, yeah. Imagine if they had like her in the purple suit and the long hair coming out the back. That would have been cool. Yeah. I was when, very upset when I first watched this movie. There was no Batman. I was like appalled. Yeah. Th- that's I, gotta, the other... I, I gotta be honest with you. Like, uh, one of like uh, Catwoman's 2000 design when it first came out, I hated it, but it's kind of grown on me. I think that's my preferred design now. Mm-hmm. And by a CG anime fan, ignore Twitter because outside of Twitter, it's more like than you think. Twitter is yeah. not the real thing, Twitter is not the real life. Hey, what's up, Tavia? Yeah, yeah, like, like I remember, um, like people like Henry Cavill, especially as Superman. Like, I, I remember uh, I was at a cookout with my family one time, and uh, one my older sister, she started talking about Henry Cavill as Superman, and she's about as normie as it gets. And if she's talking about Henry Cavill as Superman, uh, well, t- technically she was being thirsty for him, but but still. Yeah, you can't know. blame her. But <laughs> it's, yeah. it, cr- critics who were split on Man of Steel, the critics' opinion doesn't matter, CG Comics. Critics fan, because... are idiots. Critics are yeah. idiots. Yeah, exactly. And look at any YouTuber cool. reaction to Man of Steel where they're like, the the title is the best Superman movie through, throughout and throughout. It was well liked by normies. BVS is an interesting case because it was what well, the ultimate is cut is well liked. BVS is the one that's divisive, not really Man of Steel. Yeah, it, and then it's le- it's still divisive, but it's less divisive when it comes to the ultimate cut. ZSJL is almost universally liked compared to Craftisly. That's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. But uh, I, I think they, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but uh, going back to Catwoman, I think they even did comics based on this movie or like a uh, a comic adaptation at least. Yeah, I mean, they do that for a lot of them. Remember, The Flash uh, got a comic book prequel. That's where we got like Ezra Miller. Um, let's say about that. Anyway, That's where they mind. explain like where he got the new suit, where like he could phase through stuff and i'm like it was a it was a fun comic even aquaman got one and that was actually really really dope yeah so yeah yes there was a comic adaptation uh linkara reviewed it okay yeah yeah i figured there was (laughs) but uh so in terms of this all right so now let me ask you guys this and by it's it's a lot if you have if you have to to uh yeah you can go ahead and uh, and and dip out Yeah, I'm going to have to dip, so uh, I'll speak to you guys later. Hey, thanks right. for joining us. Yeah, uh, no problem. Hell yeah, dude. See, see you later. Uh, so, see you later. 
And by the way, yeah. Haladia plays, all of his stuff is in the description below. Yeah. So please. the a way that I think they could have at least improved it is because here's the thing: this movie doesn't even have Batman. And here's the thing: Batman is kind of important to the Catwoman world. Very important, some yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah very extreme and very important. So you can you really here's the thing. This is like doing a, a, a movie on like Morbius or Craven without Spider-Man, but there's no way they would do that. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying it's cat, <laughs> are you saying it's catwomaning time? <laughs> it's cat in time. Uh, yeah. And yes, Tevia, I played the game. Don't worry, I suffered it. Oh, uh, yeah. She, she she uh she died. So Nick's died for your sins. You know, it's kind of funny. That may be a thing we add on to, to Nick's punishment that she has to positively review Avengers 200 and positively review the Catwoman game. Oh, God. It's actually I mean, been so long since I played that game, but I remember every agonizing moment within it. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I make her play it on stream. Oh, that would be more fun. Because <laughs> because then we can heckle her. We can heckle her now. Yeah. Sweet. Next, I might make you play it on my stream. Like, we'll load it up into an emulator. Oh, now, no. let me ask you guys this. Say they did include Batman for this. Who would you cast as Batman to, to like, to, like, have chemistry with Halle Berry? Um, Good question. Denzel Hugh Washington. Jackman. Denzel Washington. Actually, yeah, if you wanted a black Batman, he would actually be really good back then. If Jace been. Fox. If Jace Fox. Oh, CG. Yes, at least Supergirl mentioned Superman. And they had a photo yeah. of him, too. They had a photo yeah. of him. Well, because here's the thing. Arguably, Superman is even more important to Supergirl than Super than Batman is to Catwoman. Being in Supergirl's cousin probably would help that. Yeah. Venom only worked because um, he became a, a bit, bit, big enough with his own brand since the 90s. Yeah, exactly. If the 90s era of uh, of Venom didn't happen, I don't think you would have uh, you would have had a Venom movie. Well, to, uh, actually, I think it worked is, is because Tom Hardy had such a strong portrayal as the character. Like they had kind of, like the odd couple dynamic. It kind of worked for the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. the lore of Venom was kind of enough to carry its own movie. Yeah, Catwoman exactly. lore is not enough to carry your own movie. I'm sorry, Tavia. We were making a joke, but anyway. So who who else could could portray Batman? You know what? I'll ask Nick. So who would you want to to play Batman? CG anime fan brings up Keith David. I love Keith David. I would Spawn watch playing Batman. Like... That's a great idea. I, I just oh, I still I... oh oh oh, oh no, no no I no, got no. it. Michael Jai White. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Here, I, I keep saying this. I want Warner Brothers to make an animated Spawn Batman movie. And what they could do, have Bruce Greenwood play Batman and Keith David play Spawn. <laughs> that would it be could so work. Good. That could definitely work. Uh, how about Keanu Reeves? No, I can't see Keanu playing Batman. Constantine, definitely. No. I could definitely see <laughs> well, 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 here's the thing. If, if if Keanu Reeves plays Batman, he'd be a Batman with guns. He'd be Batman Lots of guns. He could be Grim Knight, the Batman that literally uses guns. That would be great. Uh, and Randy has a great a great suggestion. It'd probably never work and definitely not be the best version of the character, Ben Affleck. Mm. That's like saying Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. There's no way that would work out. So this is a bit of a tangent, but... Um... I, I, I want to pitch a, a pitch a movie idea. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to pitch a Black Cat movie. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, in the next Spider-Man movie, you have Black Cat in there, played by whoever, okay? No, uh, you, you have to cast Black Cat. All right, all right. Okay. Well, if th that means we got to cast Black Cat in the MCU. We got to have it be like more Tom Holland's age. So uh, Anna Taylor-Joy's Black Cat. Let's just Yep, that it. works. I like that. Um, and so we have that, and then Black Cat gets a solo movie. Um, uh, maybe maybe it's even the Silver and Black movie that that Amy Pascal's been trying to pitch for the last fifteen years. Um, and like Peter Parker's there, not there, 
But because she first appeared in Spider-Man and people ended up liking her, then that movie works. The problem, and, and that really just shows the Sydney Sweeney as Black Cat. Yes, 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 yes. But mm -hmm. she, she has to get that done playing work. Power Girl first. She has to finish playing Power Girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sydney Sweeney's the only character who can play Power Girl now. <laughs> Yeah, th th there you go. I I, I could but, see but, that. Madam Web doesn't exist. We all wish that. I'm sure Dakota uh, Johnson wishes it too. Yeah, uh, Tevia. Asked, she literally oh, fired her agency. I was like, if you could make this movie, would you make it in just a heist movie? Yes. Well, you could do. Here's how you can make that. Here's how you can make that. Make it a heist movie, like three heists in the movie, but in each of them, she's being pursued by Batman. Yes. Imagine, imagine, uh, imagine a Snyder vs. Catwoman movie starring Carla. Yes, because that's who. That's who. Because someone brought up to Zach Carla Gugino as Catwoman. He goes, actually, yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, she's the perfect age to play a, a Ben Affleck Catwoman. And you know what's kind of funny? In the lore of the Snyder verse, they were married. So we, we, what you could have done, what would have been really cool, the way I would, I would have done the Ben Affleck Batman movie. So after Justice League. A Batman has obviously returned to being like not like the murderous Batman that he wasn't like BBS and such. So he's trying to like pick pick up the pieces of his life. So he tries to to win back S uh, Selena Kyle and bring back Nightwing. And he goes, "Look, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf." So there's me. And by Tevia, yes, Batman is the antagonist. That would be a fantastic again because first off, that would be an original idea that we've never done in a DC movie, as far as I know. Plus, it would be kind of cool because you could play on, on that cat and mouse thing. Eva Green would have been the right age for a Snyder vs. Catwoman too. Eva Green, I see, Dave, counterpoint, she would have played a great Poison Ivy. I, I think she would have been a, a better Poison Ivy person. Um, Eva Green. Yeah, Eva Green for Poison Ivy, exactly. I think that somebody like Black Mask could have been the villain in the film. Yeah, that's true. You could make it she's doing heists for Black Mask. For like some reason, like maybe um, he's like holding a, a member of her family hostage or something like that, and he has and she has to do these heists. And then Batman is like pursuing them. And then at, at the end of the movie, it's Batman and Catwoman teaming up to sit to stop Black Mask. There you go. I just made a Catwoman movie. Woo. And it's and and it's ten times better than what you just had to suffer through. Uh, exactly. DC, hire us. I will fix your D I will fix your movie universe within like a year. I'm sure I can. I, I mean, the first thing you're gonna, you're you're gonna do is like, okay, so Superman and Wonder Woman have to be together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Superman and Wonder have to be together. Uh, Batman and Catwoman have to be together. There has to be a scene where someone suggests that Wonder Woman and Batman should be a couple, and Wonder Woman goes, "Banish the thought from your mind," and then. There has to be a scene where someone uh, suggests like, like Batman and Batgirl should be a thing because they're both bad characters. And then he goes, that is disgusting. I, you know, I, I would <laughs> go through all of that. And I'm saying that so it sounds like it, it would be uh, randomly put into a into a, uh, a cartoon universe. But anyway, mm. but um, oh, a redhead like Christina Hendricks. Uh, uh, uh. No, nah, but I still say, see, yes, I do agree with you on that. A redhead could, could be I good. think she would Here's make a thing. better Vicky Vale. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But uh, see, Eva Green, see, the thing about Eva Green is that she has that evil streak that is yeah, like no, no, okay. perfect. Let me, I, I'll do you one better. Eva yeah. Green has that kind of like central uh, intimacy word presence that, it, it, like, that kind of X factor. I mean, Christina Hendricks also has it, but it's not like Eva Green just kind of has like, like, like she can just look at you and you're like, oh. Well, remember she uh, it's uh, uh, remember Casino Royale that that's what it did. Uh, Grace and One Sleep with Catwoman. I don't know, but it sounds like it'd be written by Bruce Tim. Would sounds you like add a Tom King story? Yeah, exactly. Would you add Holly Robinson, who is a Catwoman supporting character? Maybe, but I uh, see with this, I would just keep it simple. Keep it maybe well, at the if it's end. A cat, if, it's a, Holly. if it's a Catwoman movie, I actually would put her in there because it's mm -hmm. basically her, her, her. Like it would basically be her woman in the chair. It's like her every every superhero has to have a normal person that they can talk to. Hi, Whiskers. Sorry. Okay, I, you I know what that, that actually works. Uh, that that, that actually Batman works. has okay. Alfred. 
you know, every character has like their normal person. And Holly is basically Catwoman's normal person. Okay. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll take that. Uh, you have changed my mind, sir. I will go I'm with that. I'm pretty good at that. It's yeah, the Daniel Holly goes... who was kidnapped by Black Mask. Ah, there, there you go. There you go, hard to get her back. There you go. That That is perfect. They, Nick saved it. So Daniel says that the main mistake that pre-Snyder DC movies made, it was mm -hmm. to make movies in di different universes not connecting together. Counterpoint, Daniel. Before the before like the MCU popularized it, shared movie universes were not real uh, live action were not really a thing beyond having like sequel to movies. Because yep. the MCU proved it could work. That's the thing. Yeah. But uh, so th that's my one count. Um, Dick Grayson should have been an Eskimo, but uh, but plays with his adoptive father with his adoptive father with any character. Okay, but yes, uh, no, keep that. Mm -hmm. Let's not but, do that uh, anymore, DC. Do you know who I? Uh, do you know what's kind of funny? I bet you, if Bruce Tim were in charge, night and I mean, Wayne like would especially once you realize that, like, what? what Dick Grayson was supposed to be, if he if he had stayed with the circus. Like, uh, Bruce saved his life, uh, you know. Yeah, the minute it's like, to be a Owls happens and you realize that he was supposed to be a Talon, I'm like, oh, that's actually really cool. I, yeah. I dig that so much. That's such a great idea. That was, like, that was a really great addition to the lore, not going to lie. Yeah, but that's an example of a retconning a character's history, but doing it in a way that actually doesn't piss people off. So uh, it's, yeah, amazing it's, how, like, it's, it's amazing how Snyder people are good at, at DC, huh? Yeah, and I like the whole, like, gray sun. Like, they took a random name, and they extracted that lore from it, and it, just, and it like, yeah, sure, it didn't exist before, but it fits so perfectly in pre-existing lore. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes so, so much sense. Exactly. So, now let me ask you this. Okay, so, Nick, how would you make a Catwoman movie? And then I'll, I'll ask the same question to Nick's. Okay, what's the question? How would you make a Catwoman movie? Would how would you m m make a Catwoman movie? Oh. Well, first off, I I introduce her um, in a Batman movie first, so people are already attached to the character. There you go. Um, and I'd have it be set in the same universe, like make it very clear, you know, because like you can do a movie where Batman does a Catwoman round does show up. You just need to have her, you know, like I I put her in Europe, honestly. Like, just put her far away from Gotham, where it's like, yeah, Batman's not going to show up. Um, I don't know. Um, by the way, Brown, was it written by Bruce Tim? Uh, I have I, to I, ask that. Here, actually, actually here, here's what I would do. Um, basically, she's in Europe trying to get away. She, mm -hmm. gets, she gets contacted by an agent from the League of Assassins. Ooh. And it's, it's, uh, it has it has been um, basically there is a container of there is like a pit it's called the pitcher of life, and it actually has water from a Lazarus pit. Okay. And Rachel Ghoul wants her to steal it before they realize what they have. Mm -hmm. And um, she's going up against Maxwell Lord, who is trying to get either you know who is trying to get that pitcher. Because he knows what it is. So it's a race against time. So basically you have, like, he's teaming up with the League of Assassins to steal Lazarus water. Um, and Maxwell Lord is trying to, like, the, Maxwell Lord is the antagonist. So she snaps his neck then. <laughs> the movie can be good, but it can be better. Exactly. And, and, and you know what's kind of funny? That would actually work really well. She kills Maxwell Lord, and that puts a little tension between her and Batman. That would actually, that could actually work really cool. By the way, I just want to state, I came, I, I came up with this movie on the fly. Like you asked me to pitch a Catwoman movie, and I just literally just pulled this out of my butt, like just this instant. So let that be a credit. To Not myself. bad, honestly. I, I would definitely see that. That's actually a pretty dope story. And a uh, question, what'd you guys get rid of the cat powers? I think that's pretty obvious, Tempe. <laughs> she, she does not get superpowers. Because again, part of what makes Catwoman such a cool character is what she's able to do with no powers. Mm -hmm. But Nick, like, so let me ask you this, real Catwoman. How would you make a Catwoman movie? Make it a good old-fashioned vice. 
We'd have Batman as the antagonist kind of sort of chasing her down. But she gets away in the end. I like that. What you could even do is make it so there's a subplot where like she's even going to, to, when she's going to society events, like scout out her heists, she keeps meeting Bruce Wayne and she doesn't know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. At the end, she can find out. But like, I kind of like the idea of keeping their flirtation intact, like in the mask, outside of the mask. And then at the end, after she's gotten away, we find out that she's on a beach somewhere could be in Europe somewhere, who knows. And all of a sudden, while she's enjoying the, the sun, there's a shadow that steps right in front of her, and she's like, hey, you're blocking my light. Bam! It's Bruce. Yeah, what you can even do is, like, Bruce l- let her escape uh, because, because he so really loves that. her. And then he rendezvous and he goes, I see you found my fat beach. I had to put that in front of everything. <laughs> There you go. Wait, uh, it, no, 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 no. It's like Bruce. This isn't your beach. He's like, yeah, it is. I just bought it five minutes ago. And then he, and then he, he even draws a giant bat in the sand. But anyway, no, no, Randy's... no, no. Oh, okay, I, I got to do this. What happens is you see Bruce entering the beach, and um, like you can't really hear it. Like you see the guard, like, hey, sir, this is a private beach. And all of a sudden, you you see him like uh, stuff a check in there, and I'm like, oh yes, yes, just go ahead. And then he says, yeah, I just bought it like a few minutes ago. And like yeah. it's that whole scene, like you don't hear him say it, you don't hear the dialogue. But you, I, just... I'm sorry, <laughs> Nolan established the best precedence for Bruce Wayne. Whenever he like gets challenged by something, he has to go. I'm rich. He, that, that, that is the most fantastic. Thing. I'm sorry, the whole I am now buying this hotel and I'll make a few like that is like the or most. Wait, at the end of ZSJL, when Clark goes, "How'd you get the house put back from the bank? I bought the bank." I uh, and that. and Clark's like, wait, what? I I love that. That is so good. If they did a Catwoman movie, at least m- uh, have Batman make a cameo appearance or a mention, or in our thing, have him be the antagonist. Actually, kind of funny thing, but uh, Batman as the antagonist makes me think of this uh, horror game pitch I saw a while ago, where they're like, you're just like a regular guy working for like any one of the criminals in Gotham. And Batman is the antagonist, and you're just trying to survive. Yeah, I saw. I heard this great idea for a battle royale game where it's one of those BRs where, where like, the, there's a circle that keeps like insert. It keeps getting smaller, but the circle is actually the Bat Family chasing you. Wow, that could be really cool. Uh, Jared, it's Nightwing Beth Fifty two Catwoman is on top of Nightwing while kissing him, and criminals are, sh- are showering bullets at them. So it's like an All Star Batman and Robin, where Batman is having sex with Black Canary as two criminals burn up. Man, man, Nightwing really has you a know. problem with girls getting on top of him when he doesn't want them to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The things he does <laughs> for the city. I would make a film about Catwoman uh, being framed for a crime, so both Batman and other Gotham villains are chasing her throughout the movie. Basically, a violent superhero chase theme. That's a great idea as well. That's a great idea. And Daniel says, actually, a Catwoman movie should have been the, the main uh, spinoff for Batman Returns, like it was supposed to be. To explain what happened after that iconic last scene of Catwoman sees the, the bat signal from afar. Well, if you want to see what happens to Catwoman after that, check out the Batman 89 comics, because they explain that. Don't look for good. the uh, the comic Danny DeVito wrote about uh, no. his portrayal of the Penguin and Catwoman getting together and fighting COVID, but... Uh, no, no. Wait, wait, no, no. wait, 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 wait. Did you say they, they fight, they get together and they fight COVID? Their yeah. master plan is they want to spread the vaccine throughout the world. Like, they're, uh, like, a couple. Uh, a couple. And they're a couple, that too. And it's the Danny DeVito version of the Penguin, I believe. Yeah, because he wrote it. He wrote the comic. Yeah. Question. Yeah. How, how did you get... A, how would you get a, get with that terrible cop movie in this movie? It's interesting. I wouldn't even introduce him, so, so there's no... Uh, so I don't even have to come up with a way to remove him. Benjamin they, Bratt's character? <laughs> yeah. They could have replaced the, the officer character with someone like Montoya or Bullock. Exactly. There's yeah. th- here's the thing. All you have to do is set uh, is like set this in Gotham, and you have all these characters here that you can put in here that organically make sense and would be chasing well, Catwoman. 
the problem is, yeah, if they said it in Gotham, it's because it's clearly in the Burton verse. Okay, mm -hmm. they already have Bullock in the in the in the Burton verse, so it'd have to be Montoya. Like I don't, I, I like they didn't ever show Montoya. But here's a question for you, like. Well, first off, I think like Holly Berry from this vintage would have made a great Montoya. She probably still would make a great Montoya. Okay, yeah. what if no Jennifer Lo in this in this era Jennifer Lopez would have played Montoya in the Snyderverse, so she could be right next to Ben Affleck's Batman. No, I'm talking about early 2000s era, like Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, you that that could work as well. That, that could work. I could see that. Um. Tevia says, "Also get get rid of the CEO." Well, yeah, we ignore the whole cosmetics plot because that was stupid. Um, Sandra B Bullock could have been a great Barbara Gordon against Halle Berry's Catwoman. Uh, Sandra, Sandra Bullock, Bullock was a little bit too old. She as Batgirl, no, no, oh, or as Oracle. Maybe in like, point, may, no. may, like if this was like Batman Returns and you had Sandra Bullock, then then okay, yeah, I could see that, but like. Catwoman, 10 years later, no. No, no. And then Dave the Impaler says, did you hear that both Arnold and Danny want to return as Penguin and Mr. Freeze? They, they could show up in a Batman Beyond movie with Keaton. If they make it, if they make it, Britt yeah. Evan, uh, Br oh, my good friend Britt says, for a Catwoman movie, they should also explore how Selena tries to help the orphan kid she calls strays like in the comics. Yep, exactly. There's, mm. That could be a subplot in the movie where we're like, uh, she's trying to uh, to uh, do, uh, do that or you could do even if you don't want to have black mask um kidnap holly it could be he says you either steal this for me or we go take out the the strays all right here's the title catwoman gotham city siren Ooh, i do like that and then you can lead to a gotham city sirens movie well that that's kind oh. of the idea is is this is kind of a gotham city sirens movie but it's primarily starring Catwoman. I like how mm -hmm. we're all just spitballing ideas way better than the actual movie ends up oh. being. Jessica Alba. As Montoya? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can dig it. I dig it. I could actually definitely say that. That actually works real well. So, so you could have Sue Storm as Montoya. Not bad. Um, mm -hmm. So... Before we wrap up, so let's rate this movie. All right, how do you guys rate this movie out of 10? I'll start. I give it basically, since I can't give it any, like, any boost because it didn't have hail or any of the important people, I give it probably a two. At, at most is a two, and that's me being generous. How about you, Nick? Uh, yeah, I put it at a two as well. Like, it has some merit, but, you know, I don't know. Nick, how about you? I give it like a 1.5 to a 2. I, the best thing yeah. about it was the bonus feature. CG comic fan is 7 out of 10. Oh. Oh, dear God. Okay. I, I mean, you're allowed to disagree. But, um, yeah, so, uh, Brown says 5 out of 10. Even that's a little generous. But, okay, you could say it's average, kind of. There you go. If you want to get, give it points, I would have given it a five if they had Jennifer Hale somehow in the movie, but no, I can't do that. So, um, in terms, of, but in terms of, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and wrap it up. So, Nick, where can we find? Uh, yeah, Randy's got it. Got got it. One out of ten. So, Nick, where can we find you, and what have you got coming on your channel? All right, in a little more than an hour. Sorry, I love that that ID four thing. Um, Nix, Jared, and Lug and I will be uh, playing some Spider-Man remastered. One more day, dude. Just, just no. Just, just, just no. Um, we paid our dues. And uh, we'll be doing that. Then on Monday, we got we, we got rewatch come, and then on Wednesday, uh, Jared and I will be will be interviewing Mass of the TDS to go over the bot situation with Disney, Warner Brothers, Ubisoft. It's going to be a really great interview. Like this, this guy, this guy's been quoted on Fox News. He's been quoted. Uh, he's been like interviewed on all the big podcasts. So this is a bit of a big get, and it's going to be a great one. And uh, Jared, I love how you even brought information to him that he wasn't even aware about. Yep, because trust me, I track BS from from WB pretty extensively. 
yeah so that that's gonna that's gonna be great yeah so n- next where can one find you on twitter slash x at bunny girl nick i kind of just made me do whatever catches my fancy exactly Britt g- gives it a four out of ten. Dave g- gives it a ten more billions out of more trillions. It's morbid time. Brown g- gives it a four point seven out of ten. Five is too liberal. And then, w- who would black play Black Mask in your movie? Probably. Real quick, who would play Black Mask in this Catwoman movie? Oh, that's a question because I'm casting with the early two thousand. Are, are yeah. we talking about Catwoman? Uh, yeah. Early two thousands mindset. Um. Uh, of uh, what's what's the guy from Scarface? Um, I forget. Uh, the guy. You can uh, have him go. See, so you can have him go. Say hello to my little friend. Uh, the guy from Scarface. Um, he was, he's in a bunch of movies. Like he's a really good actor. Uh, his name. Uh, the guy who played Scarface. Chad, help me out. Ben Diesel. No. <laughs> so, it's all about family. Actually, Hugo, Hugo Weaving. Weaving. Actually, that's not a bad idea, right there. Al Pacino. Thank you, Tevye. Al Pacino. How did you not know that? I was drawing a blank. Also, I'm playing Fall Three on my Steam Deck, so. I'm just and he ha- and Nick's old man brain was acting up again. So there you go. Actually, Fall Three runs very well on the Steam Deck, by the way. Oh boy! As far as comics leaks, so Britt and I are going to be talking about JLA Power and Glory. Obviously, I'll be on Nick's show to critique him with Spider Man. I'll be on the Master TDS stream, and next week for movie night on Friday night, we're going to be talk watching and and live reacting to Rebel Moon Part Two: The Scar Giver, which I'm so excited for because the Zack Snyder movie and those don't show up that often. So anyway, stay heroic, everyone. And remember, Lois Lane is Lois Lane, and she belongs to General Zod. See you later. Bye-bye.